going on, everybody? Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Black Student Success Podcast, where we bring insight and guidance from successful Black professionals. This is brought to you by Inquire Hire. My name is Selvin Inquire, and I'm one of the co-founders, and I appreciate you joining us today. So for today's guest, we, you know, we have, uh, we have, you know, what's, who's called a, a serial entrepreneur. Um, a lot of the things that he's gotten into, he has a media company, uh, clothing and footwear lines. He has gotten into artist management. He has his own course, his own skincare products. He's an author, a philanthropist, and he's also a proud member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, I'm super excited to actually talk to this brother here because he has done a lot since the last time I've actually interacted up with him. So this is going to be pretty cool to get into the story and how he's gotten to this point. So ladies and gentlemen, Edward Griffin, how you doing, Ed? Pretty good, man. Thanks for having me. No, thanks for, for being here. I really appreciate your time. So, oh, for sure. you know, so we definitely want to give you an opportunity to kind of tell the people who you are as a person. So I'm going to first ask, who is Edward Griffin? So for me, I'd like to think I'm a driven person, but I think my passion is more to impact and inspire. And I think mm -hmm. that's who I am at my core, right? So everything I've ever done, even outside of entrepreneurship, I'd say for me, Am I impacting people? Mm -hmm. Am I inspiring people? That's always me at my core. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm the typical driven person. I think I do a lot of things until I see it through. Um, I'd like to think that I'm a family person, good friend, brother, cousin. But overall, I'm just me and just trying to be, I'd say, a person that you can look to for inspiration mm -hmm. more than anything. There you go. No, I appreciate that. So when it comes to the journey that you took when it came to entrepreneurship, where did that all begin for you? Man, entrepreneurship for me was, I think I was a kid. Mm. So I think starting back when my brother would give me money, when candy was like penny candy, I'd go to the store and get a hundred pieces of candy, go to school, sell it for two cents, just because we didn't have much at school. So for me, that was kind of my weight way of kind of starting entrepreneurship, not really even knowing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, even when I was younger, early elementary, I grew up in Chicago. And so I would uh, take my friends and hire them to shovel snow, but I would be their boss. I would go and speak to the owner. Mm -hmm. I would get the money and I would split it equally. So even being grown up in Wisconsin too. So even have my friends and you know family members just cutting grass, shoveling snow, those types of things, but not really knowing what I was getting into, right? But I understood that, man, I like getting my own money. I like negotiating that. I like being my own boss. Even though I split it equally, equally with my friends, I was still the boss. Yeah. So I think, and then learning the difference between the boss and the manager later on, I kind of understood, you know, the importance of managing versus being a boss. But I would say entrepreneurship for me came very very early okay yeah and you know it's funny when you kind of look back in hindsight with the things that you know now and you're like oh i was doing this when i was eight you know yeah. and, and and seeing all of the the different things that have progressed you know as those little things like selling candy has built into you know selling other things mm -hmm. so now when you know you know Shortly after we first interacted, this was years ago, you know, the first thing that I've seen was, you know, Hip Hop You See It, which is, you know, the media company, which is the, you know, um, you know, Hip Hop Entertainment, and, you know, it's a print and online magazine. So when did that start, and, you know, how was that created? So, so good question. So Hip Hop You See It is my baby. Um, mm -hmm. Just celebrated 14 years on September 26th. Yeah, congratulations. So, yeah, thanks for that. Um, so I remember being five years old and being in the kitchen and my mom was cooking. She was taking some lasagna out of the oven and I'm like, mom, this is five years old. I'm like, mom, when I grow up, I'm going to be in entertainment and I'm going to uh, do this and do that in the entertainment industry. I'm going to work in radio. And I said these things, not really knowing, but having an idea based on TV, how cool it looked. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, back in... I would say, well, in the early 2000s, for me, I got hired at V100, 
uh, at the radio station. I worked there for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And even being there and having an understanding of what entertainment was in, in college, you know, being a DJ and working in radio myself, in college, I'm like, man, I love interviewing celebrities. I love the idea of, you know, just being in the entertainment world. But I said, what I found that it's very tough to get in if you don't have an in, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't know anybody. Yeah. So for me, I was like, man, you know, I want my own media company. But at first I didn't know it was that. I knew it was, I wanted a, a, a print magazine. And I'm like, that's gonna be pretty tough to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is do an online magazine, which was pretty new back then. Mm -hmm. And I didn't wanna do any gossip blogs or anything like that. I wanted to focus on journalism. So with me, I was like, you know what? I know so many journalists, aspiring journalists, graphic designers, um, videographers, photographers, who wouldn't have a way normally to get into the field. Mm -hmm. So I want to create this platform to give them an opportunity. So Hip Hop You See It came from that, man, in the name Hip Hop You See It. If you know, back in the day, Young Jock had this song, I Know You See It. Mm -hmm. So when I thought about hip hop, um, I always looked, like, looked at hip hop in a positive light. For me, hip hop is the way we dress, the way we talk, the way we look. Mm -hmm. It's black culture. Yeah. And so many people are so engulfed in our culture, so it's ours to have. So the you see it came from when you see hip hop and you see those people in that field, you see all of us. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the name came from. But that's really the foundation, wanting to give people an opportunity in entertainment industry who wouldn't normally have that opportunity. Yeah, and, and I think when it comes to specifically a, a media company where you have all those different aspects of, you know, you know, trying to get the, the, the journalist, you know, trying to get somebody to design the website, you know, mm -hmm. doing graphics for, you know, whether it's, you know, pictures on the website or things that can be translated into social media sure. and, and then all the business behind you, there are people to fill those spots. And it looks like you've created this something, you know, um, at the time that did give those opportunities and has grown, you know, you're still doing it, you know, now 14 years in. And the, the crazy thing is, is now you have built upon that, you know, and, and you have turned it into, you know, something that incorporates you and you have all these different branches or extensions of you within these brands. So, you know, on your website, you've got 13 brands of, you know, a, a multifaceted, you know, arrangement of different things that you're doing. Now, was this all part of the, the master plan when you kind of started, you know, getting into different aspects of entrepreneurship or, you know, were the 13 brands just kind of like a byproduct of you continuing to, you know, reach the goals and the ambition that you have? Yeah, for me, I think it's the elevation. But of course, I didn't know it was going to grow into this. I had no idea. I set out to create an opportunity for people because I wanted that and I wanted to grow with that. But my goal was to have my own print magazine. That was always the goal, mm -hmm. right? And so I think when you think about hip hop itself, what comes from that, like fashion has always been hip hop. That's always been the beginning of, of how it started, right? It's the culture of it. So I knew I wanted a magazine, a print version, and I knew I wanted my own fashion company, my own clothing company, mm -hmm. right? So what a lot of people don't know is that when I first started hip hop, you see it, I had, I did my first shirts. I had a clothing company called You See It Clothing. That started 14 years ago, which now brings out to different things. But uh, getting back to the question, I had no idea that it would kind of grow to this. Yeah. For me, it was about developing and growing every year. And so I found ways that I can grow every year. And really when you look at the 13 plus things, because things aren't listed, mm -hmm. when you look at those things, for me it's about um, everything I was passionate about. Right. It wasn't something I looked at and said, hey, I'm going to do this because it looks cool. Mm -hmm. No, it was something I was passionate about. It's something I've always wanted to do. And I think we'll get to it later. But even something as big as like my sneaker company. Right. Mm -hmm. That was huge for me. I remember being in a room with my cousin, my older brother and my cousins, and we would draw Nikes and Jordans. That was always really cool. I know I wasn't. Yeah, I was a good athlete, but I knew I wasn't going to be an NBA or the NFL. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like, man, how can I create my own for, in, in, so creating my own that would help me with getting my passion out, but two, how can I impact people in this area in the same way that I'm impacted by Jordans or mm -hmm. Iversons or whatever it is. And if you follow me, normally I've been a sneakerhead most of my life. 
since I've been able to buy shoes. And so yeah. in, in creating my own sneaker company with that, made it a way for me to bring one of my passions forward to the forefront. Okay. And, and we, we've heard this before and we, we talked about this with other guests when they, whatever it is that they do is more so a channel or some type of medium of, you know, some type of, you know, either, you know, thought process or belief process. And for you, you know, you mentioned that it's all about, you know, inspiring people and it's, you know, you know, getting out your, your passion and creating something that's yours that, you know, you can really stand on and, you know, push forward that has its own, you know, positive messages behind it. And so it sounds like you've done this kind of with, you know, the, the shoe company, the, you know, the media company and all the other things that you're doing and working on. And so I, I definitely wanted to point that out to our listeners when it comes to sure. having a, you know, belief or, you know, something that you believe in and using these different avenues like starting a business to really channel that. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad sure. that you're able to really embody that now. One of the things that I noticed when kind of looking at all the different things that you're doing, there is, you know, you can definitely see a lot of influences, a lot of incorporation of black culture, like you mentioned before, you know, you look at, you know, the, you know, the, the logos, the color selections, you know, we see influences of those things. We see influences of your fraternity and you also have taken it to that step where you want these things to be socially responsible. So what was the, the mindset that you had behind all of these different incorporations in the brands that represent you? Yeah, so thanks for that. Um, I think for me, the biggest thing was the first thing being black, right? We're black and there's nothing. Being black is a superpower. <laughs> it it's <is> something <laughs> that we just, yeah, we're going through a lot these days, but truly being black is a superpower. People want to be black. You look at just the everyday commercials, the advertising, the marketing, it's all influenced by black people. And because of that, I think it's important that when you're black owned and, and black owned is, is pretty cliche these days because people are now looking for black owned stuff. But being black owned and being um, one of those things where you're able to take black culture forward is really, really important. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, putting black at the forefront is really important because, again, when I think about impacting and influence in our culture, I want little black boys, little black girls to see this and say, hey, I can do it. Mm -hmm. That's important to me. And so for me, it, you can easily create these things and hide behind them and create what's already out there in terms of like the advertising and marketing. But I'm looking for my people, right? Yeah. Because I know when my people love it, it's already going to be impact. The impact is already going to spread past them, right? Mm -hmm. Into the masses. And so for me, being black is really important, but the social aspect of it from the very beginning, I'm like, no matter what I do, I'm going to give back because I knew that everything that I've always done. And when I looked at the, the brands I love and the things I loved and how often I saw them in the neighborhoods or how often I was a recipient of being gifted certain things, mm -hmm. it was rare. So for, and I grew up in a community center, like always going to the community center. So I understood how important it was to have to go back and, um, and give back. So for me, I wasn't going to do anything without giving back. In the beginning, we probably see it. We only made money. We didn't make a lot of money through advertising because it was new, mm -hmm. but we did a lot of events. So we made our money that way. And so no matter what we did, I was given a percentage of it to a cause of some sort, yeah. something that was close to me something that I felt would help those other little black boys and black girls. So that for me was important to me. And there's not anything you can point out in terms of what I have going now that wouldn't tell you that social entrepreneurship isn't first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it, you know, the, the influence of seeing, you know, something great and the, you know, the person behind it or the team behind it looks like you was super, super impactful. Like I remember when, you know, Ironheart came out and, you know, my daughter's nine. And so at the time I believe she was around five or so and, you know, kind of getting into the whole superhero thing, you know, just, you know, from movies coming out and things like that. And that was huge for her, you know, that, you know, they've got comics out and she's, you know, 
big into reading that just because you know she sees you know you know Reed Williams you know who's 15 yeah. and super smart and she's like yo I can you know be like you know Riri so you know I- I'm glad that you you know that you emphasize that when it comes to everything that you do and it does go deeper than you know what you're selling or what you're oh, trying sure. to provide and, and and we can we can see that we can hear as you're telling that story you're thinking about all those kids who you know want to inspire you or want to be inspired to be something and and you're trying to provide that for them so that's that's really cool um oh, for sure now when it comes to just the education piece behind it because i know that you you gone as far as getting your master's degree in entrepreneurship how important was your education or the decisions to you know go beyond the bachelor's how important was that to you with what you're doing now yeah thanks for that so for me education is really important i was the first in my family graduate high school graduate college and to go further Mm -hmm. so i didn't do that because i felt like education was the most important thing Mm -hmm. that's not why i did it i did it because how i grew up not seeing people go to school and get an education or excel in that way. I did it for that reason. I have a younger sister, younger siblings, cousins, friends that I wanted to inspire. No matter where you came from, just know that you can get an education and it can propel you forward. So when I think about education in the traditional sense, Mm -hmm. that's why I did it. Had I seen other people doing it, who knows what would have happened. But more important for me is being an autodidact, right? And so for your for your watchers and your listeners, an autodidact is a person that's self-taught, right? So you think about somebody like Nipsey Hussle mm-hmm. or Nas, right? You hear them speak and it's so much, they're so bright, right? Intelligent. There's so many different things there, but they dropped out of school early. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, um, being an autodidact was really important. And I think education, traditional education is one of those things you just can't, we've always been told you can't take that away from us. Mm -hmm. That's something we're always going to have. And that's truly, truly important. But beyond traditional education, what are you learning on your own when you're by yourself at home? Are you reading books to propel yourself forward? Are you watching people that you inspire to be? Mm -hmm. Right. So those things are really important to me. And yes, having those degrees are cool to say, (laughs) but it doesn't impact me in the terms of, um, how I'm able to move forward in life. And I think I don't want to, I don't want to get lost in this, that traditional education isn't important because I think it's, it's of huge importance, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, are you a student of your craft? Yeah. That skill set that you have, are you learning more about that skill? So I'm a huge believer in being a student of your craft. If it was up to me, I would have been okay with the seven certifications I have because I feel like those did more in my degrees, in my mind. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, I like how you pointed out the fact that, you know, are you, are you learning outside of the classroom? You know, I think there are those different experiences that, you know, a textbook can't give you or, you know, that, you know, uh, a, a professor of a certain background can't give you sure. as well. Now, when it comes to that balancing act, uh, when it comes to, you know, the, the traditional education that you've gotten and the outside of the classroom experience, you know, whether that was, you know, learning something or just being able to, you know, go through an event and, you know, see all the things that went right and see all the things went wrong and then take that and then make the next one better. You know, how do, you know, does the education outweigh the experience or vice versa, or do they kind of level out the same? What's your opinion on that? Yeah. So I definitely think the experience outweighs the education. Mm. I mean, we know that we graduate school and you go to get a job and what's the first thing they say? You don't have any experience. (laughs) So when you look at entrepreneurship, for me, when we think about putting on an event, right, that event was an amazing event to the outside. But all the work, all the money, the fact that it almost didn't happen, we lost this space. And, and so for me, um, the experience is the most important thing for me because that experience says what you need to adjust to next, mm-hmm. how you need to make this better than before. And without the experience and the education, you're only going based on someone else's experience that's what the education is yeah for me what the experience is that's your learning curve that for me is like if i haven't experienced it myself yeah as much as as you tell me this can happen or that can happen 
unless I truly experience it myself, it's going to be tough. For my, so in my mind, experiencing it first helps because there's no other way around excelling in, in an area unless you've had the experience. And I don't care what it is. Yeah. And would you, would you consider yourself um, a person who, who learns by doing, like a kinesthetic learner, or, or more, are you more visual, are you more auditorial? What, what's, where do you kind of fall within that spectrum? Yeah, so I'm a visual learner, but if you show me once, then I can do it, mm. right? So you think about like, <laughs> Hip Hop BC was the first website I built. And I've gone on and built hundreds of websites today. And it's part of my company, mm-hmm. one of my companies. So I went back to, I didn't know how to code, but I went back to Black Planet. Remember you had to put the code in for different things? Yeah. That's to play the, music when people came to your page. In the MySpace all that area. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. So learning how to code with Black Planet was what set me up to learn how to code a website. I didn't go to school for that. Mm-hmm. This is all being self-taught learning Google for me was even though Google wasn't really around, but learning how to do those small things was probably the most important thing. Again, that experience showed me, hold on, you didn't go to school for this, but you can do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. And now when it comes to the kind of prepping to, you know, do these certain things, you know, especially, you know, we can even take hip hop, you see it as an example, you know, one of the things that I always think about in terms of generational wealth and our people and how we're disadvantaged when it comes to that. <clears throat> and I can say for at least for me personally is so, still something that I'm learning myself is yeah. it starts with the foundation, you know, principles of, you know, things like spending 80 and saving 20, you know, like little things like that. Um, and I feel like with having those pieces that can build up into things, and especially if we have that pay it forward mindset that it can, you know, you know, generate this generational wealth. So when it came to the different businesses that you, you know, started getting into, how did you financially prepare for that? You know, what were the things that you were thinking about that? Okay, I need to have this set just so that I can make sure I can get to these certain goals because, you know, we can all have these great ideas, but if we don't have the... Uh, not just the actual financial resources, but the discipline behind that, it makes it a little bit harder to manifest. So what, what was that mindset for you? Good question. So I think, and so I do this masterclass. Um, one of them is called uh, The Fear of Starting. And so, so many people want to do these things and they don't know how to get it done. And the first thing they say is, I said, well, why haven't you started in X amount of years? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't have the money. So I like to tell people money isn't the first thing. Right. For me, I started everything with no money. Well, take that back. I started most things with no money. So when you think about hip hop, we see it. Well, let me say no little to no money Mm -hmm. because you need some sort of money. So when hip hop, you see it again, I learned how to code. So I I built that website myself. All I did was pay for the domain name Mm -hmm. and the hosting. Everything else I did did myself. I knew we were going to have events. So I invested in my own cameras. I learned how to edit photos and videos and things like that. I invested in myself so that I didn't have to pay anybody else to do it because I couldn't afford it. So I think for me, that's probably the most important thing. Um, So I didn't have any money when I started, but but what I tell people all the time is don't allow the lack of money to stop you from starting because there's so many things you can do without money, Mm -hmm. right? What's your mission behind your company? What's your vision? Those things come before money comes. And so starting almost everything with no money, and and now that Google is a lot more prevalent, the education out there is so easy. You can get so many things free. Um, But when I started, I told somebody this the other day, when I started Melanin 60, which is my skincare company, that was the most money I had to spend up front, right, Mm -hmm. to start a company. I've never had to do that before. So for me, it was like, because I'm so accustomed to doing everything myself, even though I did so much, so many things myself with this, you have to get the packaging, prototypes, mm-hmm. labels, chemist, all these things. And you're like, hold on, I'm not used to this. But mm-hmm. uh, to your question, I think it's important to, when you decide you're going to do something, whether it be product or service, take a step back and do an analysis of what it's going to cost you. Mm-hmm. Right? So, 
if I didn't have any money to get any packaging, I know I can build a website, right? I know that I can market ahead of that. I know how to sell shirts, clothes, Mm -hmm. so I can raise money that way. And I tell people when you're going into like clothing companies and things like that, people want to buy all this inventory. Don't do that because you, you end up losing money because now you're there with 300 shirts and you can't sell them. mm -hmm. So what I tell people is that there's so many companies out there where you can work with them. They'll ship it out. You got a t-shirt. They'll charge you $10 to design a t-shirt. You put your profit margin on top of that. Now it's 25. You have a $15 profit. Mm -hmm. You don't have any inventory. They're just buying directly from you. And so there's so many ways of making money, but I always tell people you don't need money to start anything. You have to have a vision and you have to have the ability to sit down and go educate yourself on your area. That's the most important thing before you even get to the money, because you'll notice that when you do your education and you start to do your research, Mm -hmm. you'll think, Oh, I thought I needed a million dollars. I only needed a hundred. Yeah. That education tells you that. Yeah. And, and it feels like the, the dream just got a lot closer, you know, when you, when you have those realizations. So uh, always going back to that educating and, 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 and the initiative of doing some of that yourself as opposed to just kind of waiting for that to be laid out for you. Um, so I appreciate you making that connection when it comes to the, the financial side of that. Now, I know that you mentioned, you know, starting things with little to no money. I know that that was one aspect of your challenges. What other type of challenges have you faced, you know, kind of getting into these new spaces or maybe some of them spaces a little bit familiar, but, you know, what was that like? And, you know, how did you overcome those? Yeah, I think the biggest thing, I think a lot of people experience that if you're in business, but experience this. But I think the biggest thing is that you get excited about something that you're starting. It's your baby. And you're like, oh, man, once I start this, everybody's going to be a part of it. They're going to spend their money. They're going to shop with me. And you realize that the people closest to you aren't the ones that support you the most. Mm. When you have an understanding of that early in business, you'll have a better, you have a better opportunity to accept, accept um, rejection, I'd say. Mm. Because I think we think, man, if I sell all these t-shirts, if I put all these t-shirts on sale, my friends and family are going to be buying them. I'm going to have to go get more. No, when you have an understanding that, unfortunately, the people closest to you aren't going to support you like the people that don't know you will, Mm. um, you'll have a better understanding on how to manage your business. Um, But I think how I overcame that was seeing that the people closest to me weren't supporting me. And do you get mad at them? No. You just have to trust. You have to believe in you enough that you keep going forward. Sometimes people look for other people for validation Mm -hmm. and I think we miss out on some some awesome opportunities looking for other people to validate our ideas our businesses and things like that so for me how I overcame it was I kept going forward and so Mm -hmm. my focus then became not focused on the people that are close to me but what a real customer looks like right so Mm -hmm. When I look at my orders from, from whatever it is or my services that I offer who are paying for those things are people I don't know. And those are the people you're going to reach because you want to create some sort of uh, customer identity, right? Yeah. Who's this customer? Because sometimes we create this customer based on the people we know, and that's the mistake. So, again, there's been many challenges, but the most the biggest challenge for me going into new spaces is like, well, not going into new spaces only, but starting different things is that, hey, people that are close to me won't support me Mm. like people that don't know me will. So I have to plan for that, right? I can't plan for people that know me to buy everything I own. Yeah. It just can't work that way. Yeah. And it sounds like you've you've gone into these you know, whether they're old or, or new endeavors with uh, a sense of openness and being realistic about, you know, what those results will look like and not taking those, you know, those instances where, you know, the homie's not buying, you know, these things and you're not taking those things personal. So, you know, I, I think it's good that you, once you've, once you've 
crafted or you've overcome that, everything just kind of starts to fall into place um, in terms of, you know, what your expectations are. So it sounds like you, you know, you've taken that to, to really set the tone and then that has, you know, then propelled you farther. So now if you were talking to any of, you know, these kids who are like, you know, you know, you know, like a 16 year old version of yourself who at that point, maybe they have a little bit more confidence that this is something that they want to, uh, you know, go through, you know, again, you know, we're, if we're looking at, um, you know, a kid who just wants to be able to help his community and he's using entrepreneurship doing that, or, you know, a girl who wants to, you know, help her friends when it comes to hair products that actually work for her and, and they want to take entrepreneurship as the, the avenue for that. If you could kind of build a starter kit, you know, it could be things, it could be tangible things, it could be intangible things. What would that starter kit look like for them? Oh, man, that's a good question. Um, I, I'd like to point out, too, that I'm a, I'm a late bloomer mm-hmm. in terms of entrepreneurship, right? So I learned everything on my own, and I learned that stuff a lot later than most. Um, had I known what I know, essentially today at 16, <laughs> He'll tell them we're happy to be out of here. <laughs> um, but yeah, so but my goal is to is to help other people with that. And I think I had some uh had a few things I wanted to make sure I I wrote down yeah, yeah. for this question because so for me uh the two books I have is important, but not having those, but I think one of the biggest things is is having a skill, right? Mm-hmm. Something you can do without the assistance of anybody else. Right? We all have a God given gift. That gift is only for you. So having that gift or that skill that's only for you, um, that's going to be the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that you can do without having the assistance of anyone else. And I think that's a really important thing. Um, Having, and then the next thing is having passion. Because if without passion, um, because you have to know in entrepreneurship, there are going to be ups and downs, right? And so without that passion, that passion is the only thing that's going to take you forward. It's not your drive. It's not your conviction. You have to be passionate about what you do because when you're tired in the morning, you don't feel like rolling over to get up. That passion is going to wake you up. Right. And I think that's really, really important. And then when you start something that's awesome and amazing, your friend is going to do the same thing. Right. So you're going to get these copycats. Mm -hmm. And so passion is the only thing that's going to take you through copycats because copycats are doing it because it's trendy. They're not doing it because they're passionate. So eventually those copycats will fall off. Mm-hmm. You just have to, you just have to keep going. So I think that's important. Uh, having a mentor is really, really important. If you can find a mentor, that's awesome. So having a mentor in the physical, you can pick up, you can call and say, Hey, how am I doing? Get the support. Yeah. But even beyond that, your mentor is somebody you aspire to be right? You look at Jay-Z or Diddy or Nipsey, right? Those are mentors of mine, Yeah. right? Have I met them? Yes. Have they given me advice? No, but I've studied them, right? I've studied how they got to where they started and how they, how they got to where they are today, right? So I studied where they are, the mistakes they've made. Those are my mentors in my mind mm-hmm. because now I know how to navigate certain areas, but I do think it's important to ask uh, people you know that are in your space, ask them to be your mentor. The worst they can say is no. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a couple of good mentors, and I was scared to death of asking them to be my mentor early on. But I think it's important to ask. But again, if you don't have access to those people in your space, look at people you inspire to be and look to them and look at their story, kind of study them and read um, how they got over all those different uh, stumbling blocks Mm -hmm. and i think going forward that can get you forward until you can find someone in the physical form i mean i think i have one more thing yeah yeah and then vision right i'm grateful to god that i was blessed with vision right so for me when i decide i'm going to do something i always see the end result first Mm -hmm. i see success in the end right? That's my vision, right? I envision success at the end. But with that being said, I tell people all the time, I don't know how I'm going to get there. 
99% of the time when I vision something, envision something, I have no clue how I'm, how I'm going to get there. Mm-hmm. But I always tell people this, which is the most important thing. Your mind won't go. Where, I mean, your feet won't go where your mind hasn't already been. Your feet won't go where your mind hasn't already been. So it's important when you think of something, what I like to do is once I have an idea, I just start moving in the direction of my idea. And then when you start moving in the direction of your idea, everything comes into a clearer picture. Yeah. You may not know how to do something, but just start moving in that direction and everything will happen for you. And I think that's where people make the mistake. They're like, oh, I don't want to start. I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Well, if you just start moving in that direction, I guarantee you the picture start becoming a lot more clear for you. So, yeah. Yeah. Those are my things for the entrepreneurship starter kit. That is a, it's a really dope starter kit. You know, I, and, and to that last point, I myself have fallen into that space where it's like, for me, I need to, uh, you know, see what the, what the big picture is, you know, what are the different aspects of it? And some things that does stop me sometimes is wanting to see everything a hundred percent clear before I even begin. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm glad that you pointed that out, that you, like you said, 99% of the time, you don't know how you're going to get there, but you see what that end product looks like. And then as you're either working backwards or, you know, asking people, the mentors, you know, whether they are, you know, folks that you can call or just people that you inspire to be and, and start, like you said, moving, moving towards, you know, whatever that looks like. And, you know, as you're getting closer, something or one of those pieces of that puzzle becomes pretty clear because now you're, you know, you're pretty close to it. And then you just kind of put that in place and then kind of keep moving towards those other things. So, you know, I think that one really struck to me when it comes to, you know, that paralysis of not being able to, to start sure. something because you don't see exactly how it looks. So, you know, so I'm personally kind of, you know, combating that. And I'm glad that you, you know, made a mention of that. So um, I think this has been a lot of really good information. I definitely wanted to end it on something a little fun. And I, I, yeah. and I, I think you, you know, hopefully you had fun with this one. But let's say that you're you know, you're in charge of creating a super group, uh, you know, musically, right? And it has to have a singer, a rapper, and a producer. And it could be, you know, anyone dead or alive. You're not worried about, you know, sales or anything. You just want to create a classic album. Who's going to be in the super group? Man, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, you can easily add Beyonce to anything and just <laughs> go ahead and do it. But I'm not going to pick Beyonce for the sake yeah. of that. But... Jay-Z is the greatest of all time, so that's my rapper. There you go. Picking Jay-Z. My singer is going to be Aaliyah. Mm. She's going to be my singer. And my producer is going to be Kanye West. Okay. Okay. Uh, yep. You know, Chicago influence right there, I see you. <laughs> yeah, um, but you know, Kanye has, he has a rapport with Jay-Z, a really good mm. rapport. And he tends to bring greatness musically Mm. out of people so i think he can definitely do that with Aaliyah. there you go there you go and you know i i try to actually answer this question myself and i I had a few versions and you know one that was just kind of strictly you know okay you know rapper producer singer who who would you think of real quick so one of my favorite you know i'm a i'm a late bloomer in terms of hip-hop myself one of the biggest groups that you know when i was kind of actually really listening to music was little brother so fonte from little okay brother. that would be my rapper um just blaze would be my producer mm. and and music soul child would be my singer you know so i it, it if I was like, I just want my favorites, just put it all together. That might work. <laughs> yeah, like I don't care about the, the, the chemistry or anything. That would be my group. Now I came up with the second one. I was like, okay, this is kind of like a little cheat code type of thing here. So, and you'll probably kind of catch on why. So my rapper would be Anderson Peck. My producer would be Ryan Leslie. Hmm. And my singer would be D'Angelo. And so, like, an interesting mix, but they're, you know, multi-talented. So they have... They're all, like, the same person. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I feel like the, the, the process, the influences that they would do when trying to create something, you know, I would love to be a fly on the wall just to kind of... Oh, yeah, for sure. Looks like. 
So that was sure. kind of my, that was my cheat code, <laughs> uh, uh, super group there. Uh, but no, and I, I appreciate your time. This has definitely been super valuable. You know, I, I love, I, I love to hear, you know, how this story has expanded, especially since the last time we've interacted, which was years ago. And so I'm glad that you have, you know, garnered all the success and you've done so on the principles that you, you know, talked about today. And, and I'm sure that's definitely going to inspire some folks who, you know, want to take a similar route or, you know, find something that they're passionate about and then find that channel, that, that correct medium to really push that forward. So oh, yeah, before, for sure. before we wrap everything up, I, you know, I want to give you the opportunity to let people know where they can reach you, you know, things that they can find online to learn more about you. Uh, you know, I'm going to leave it up to you. Yeah, so thanks again for your time. I appreciate this. Uh, man, I'd love to uh, to come back. Maybe when we get in person one day, yeah. this would be awesome. Um, you can find me anywhere, hip-hop, you see it, H-I-P, H-O-P, U-C-I-T, everywhere there. Um, yeah, yeah, there's so many other social media <laughs> uh, links out there. I'm not even going to go into those, but if you find me there, you find me everywhere. You can find me at egriffin.enterprises. Everything I do is there. Um, I have a ton of stuff coming up. And I guarantee you can find me uh, there. You can see everything I'm doing. And again, thank you. I'd like to tell people to just have a way that you can find your why. And I, I would say that's the most important thing. Have an understanding of why you're here on this earth. It doesn't have to be today. It doesn't have to be tomorrow. But find the purpose that you're here. And I think that's really important. There you go. So thanks Purpose. for your time. I appreciate you. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. And thanks to everybody who's listening. However you're consuming this podcast, thank you. This is super appreciated. If you want to give us feedback, if there's somebody that you want us to talk to, a career that you want to learn more about and want to kind of hear somebody's personal story with that, feel free to hit us up. We are, again, available on social media. You can contact us on our website, inquirehire.com, and you can email us at inquirehire at gmail.com. So again, Again, thank you. And until next time, peace to you and enjoy the rest of your day. Oh.